this tooth is gonna come this way, this structure is gonna do this. And so the main thing is this, access or visualization is key. Yo, what up? It's a tip of the week and today we're gonna discuss how to successfully perform a supernumerary extraction. All right guys, so if you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Jared Williams. I'm a concierge dental surgeon in Houston, Texas. Basically, I work with about 30 different offices doing surgery and implants in their office. And so after about 10 years and about 10,000 extractions, I've gotten to the point where I was just like, let me start sharing my secrets with you. So if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, press the like button, and share this with some of your friends. And if you want some great tips in terms of making sure your patients are always comfortable, check out the link down below. It's Smile After Surgery. Guys, it's my free book. I want you to take advantage of it so that you can smile after surgery. All right, so without any further ado, I'm gonna show you how and a case on how you could successfully take out supernumerary extractions. So stay tuned, I think you'll like what we have for you. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna look at your case and determine what you're working with. So I'm gonna throw up an extra here and I'm gonna show you exactly what, how, and how I would go about managing this case. So the first things first is this, you wanna make sure you have proper imaging. Anytime you're working on a case, if you're gonna be close to any type of vital structures or anything that would potentially cause you to cause further damage to any of the adjacent structures, always get proper x-rays. And so proper x-rays are not just gonna be bite wings or PAs, but it's gonna be a pano, or a CT. Now, if you could visualize a tooth, I generally speaking don't get a CT scan because if you could visualize it or palpate it with your fingers, then you definitely don't need to get your patients to do or to deal with that amount of radiation, even though the radiation is very minimal. I have a go for a course with that, but that's not for this um, today's tip. So after you get the proper radiographs, the next thing that you wanna do is watch for vital structures. So in a particular case I'm looking at right now, this case is on a panel, and as you can see that there are teeth on this panel that are overlapped. And in this particular case, I can't remember if this patient, you could actually palpate them, but I'm pretty sure you were just about how the x-rays look. But if you look at this case right here, you can see how these premolars overlap. And in this particular situation, I would get a CT scan, but what I would want to do is I would want to make sure that I am taking a keen awareness to the vital structures around. And in this particular situation, you have the mental nerve and most importantly, the other teeth that are around. Now, typically when I found that when you take out these supernumerary teeth that are bunched up together, what happens is it also makes the adjacent teeth or the surrounding teeth around it pretty loose and mobile. So you definitely wanna make sure to let your patient know, hey, when we take out this tooth, you could have devitalization, which means you're probably gonna to have to get a root canal in this tooth, but I just wanna let you know ahead of time. And by doing that, it saves you a trip to the naughty land, or it'll just save you from um, having to write a big check in the event that your patient wants to sue you, or stay up at night for it's just silly business. All these tips I'm giving you are basically to allow you to smile after surgery, but not just you, but your patients and your staff. So you just wanna let give them all these thoughts up front because if you don't, what's gonna end up happening is patients will be like, they did a successful job taking out my tooth, but my teeth around it are loose or I gotta get root canals and nobody told me. And I'm, I don't know if you're like me, but if you are, if you go through something and the individual that you're working with is an expert and they don't give you all the pros, cons, and alternatives before you get started and they say, oh, by the way, oh, they're gonna have hell to pay. <laughs> so if you're like me, you wanna make sure that you don't wanna have any type of surprises. And the best thing that you wanna do is make sure that you let your patients know everything ahead in advance, even if it doesn't happen. All right. Of course, you want to stay away from any mental nerve. Of course, you want to stay from any vital structures like the maxillary sinus or any arteries or veins in the area that you're working with. So just keep that in mind. Last but not least is this. Access is key. Guys, I would not have been able to take out 10,000 cases and want to give you this type of insight simply because if I couldn't see it, then I would not, it would always take me a lot longer. Now I've gotten to so many cases, it's kind of been so much, so easy for me now to kind of get an idea, okay, this tooth is gonna come this way, this structure is gonna do this, this tissue is gonna do that. And so the main thing is this, 
access or visualization is key. So if you're just mucking around and you can't see, there's blood all over the place and things are just going crazy, what I want for you to do is this. If you can't visualize it, then it's probably a case that you probably don't want to do, especially if you haven't gotten so many cases. So there you have it, guys. Those are the three tips that I would give you when it comes to managing supernumerate teeth because if you're gonna smile at the surgery, you have to follow these principles. If not, good luck. All right, guys, so I hope you learned something. What I want for you to do is this. Go down in the description below and write a comment. Let me know how this is helping you, if it is. If I've done anything to like enhance your thought or give you another um, perspective when it comes to surgical dentistry, what I definitely want you to do is write a comment. Hell, if you don't like what I'm putting out, let me know, I'll shut down my channel. But if it's something that's beneficial, if you like it, send me a like button. If you don't, just let me know why exactly that you don't so that if the tips aren't effective, I can definitely will take your heating and give you which, exactly what you're looking for. All right, guys. So once again, I'm Dr. Jared Williams. And remember, my focus is for you, yeah, you, to smile after surgery. Make it a great one. Oh,